After I made my House Stark Family Tree video over a year ago now, one of the prominent questions asked was why there are so few Starks. For a family that's been around for 8,000 years, you would think there would be countless cousins. But in the current book story, there are zero cousins, and only Bran and Rickon can carry on their name. Benjen's well-being in the books is still a mystery, and he gave up all his land and titles when he took the black. When George Martin was asked the question, there seem to be Lannisters and Freys under every rock. While the Starks are very scarce, does Ned not have any distant relatives who could reclaim Winterfell? He responds with a fairly lengthy and detailed explanation. He says, The Starks do have distant relations, but the problem is how to define what you mean by relations. You have some like the Car Starks who are their own family and is basically a house founded by a son of House Stark, but this was more than a thousand years ago. And the Starks have certainly married other families. For example, it's mentioned in the books that when Rob believes Bran and Rickon are dead, he has a conversation with his mother Catelyn soon after he's married Jane. He needs an heir and it's too soon for him to have a child yet. And so he tells her he needs an heir. And Catelyn replies that there are near relations. There is a relation in the Vale from an aunt in the sense of a female relation in general and not necessarily of the previous generation, of yours. That's your closest relative. To that, Rob says that there is someone much nearer to him in terms of blood and Catelyn insists these relations in the Vale are the nearest. They're both discussing a topic without being explicit about it. It's true that in recent times, the Starks have become quite scarce. There's not many of them in the present generations. Some may say it's because Ned's siblings died. Brandon died before he had any sons, and Lyanna is also dead. And Benjen joined the Night's Watch, which means he doesn't have any descendants either. It might also have to do with their father Rickard, who was an only son and I'd have to go back to my nose to see why he was the only child. He goes on to say, it's also true that there are many more Lannisters. It also has to be taken into consideration that the North has had frequent revolts and other such problems, that there have been rebel lords in the past, that they've dealt with the kings beyond the wall and the revolt of Skagos, and everything else that's occurred in the last hundred years. All of these things are a reason why there aren't so many Starks in the present as there were in the past. I'm satisfied with this explanation, but I also think it's important to remember when you're comparing the Starks to other large houses like Lannister, Frey, or Tyrell, you need to remember the huge differences between these families. The Lannisters became extremely wealthy because of all their gold mines. The Tyrells live in the Reach where the population is massive and they have the largest harvests. The Freys have their bridge, which may sound dumb, but they charge a toll free for anyone who passes and has become wealthy because of it. The Starks are in the north where they don't have much. So with the question of why there aren't more Starks pretty much answered, I thought I would talk about the branch families. George Martin mentions House Karstark being relatives to the Starks and they've even been on Game of Thrones. But there is also another cadet branch that doesn't get a lot of attention. This family is House Greystark. The reason for so little mention of this story is because they're extinct. Long ago, when the Starks were still kings in the north, a character named King John Stark had a castle built at the mouth of the White Knife to defend against attacks from raiders. The White Knife is just a river that forms in the southeastern area of the north. Younger sons and others who weren't in direct line to inherit the throne lived and ruled over this castle called Wolfsden. It was one of these Starks that formed House Greystark in Wolfstan and held it for 500 years. The last Greystark died during or after one of the Bolton rebellions. You would think that because they're related to the Starks, the House Greystark would fight with them against the Boltons, but they actually fought with the Boltons against their own family. There aren't a lot of details about this time period, so it isn't stated if the Greystarks were wiped out for rebelling or just all died in battle. Many different families ruled over Wolfsden after their extinction until House Manderley turned it into a prison and built their own castle nearby. The Karstarks have also had some trouble keeping their loyalty to a Stark king. Lord Rickard Karstark acted out of line in the current story when killing the Lannister boys that were hostages to Rob. A thousand years before the start of the story, there was a character named Carlin Stark, a younger son of a king of the north. Carlin defeated a lord rebelling against his father and was awarded lands for his actions. He had the castle called Carl's Hold built on his newly acquired land. Over time, the castle's name simplified into Carhold, and the Starks of Carhold became known as Carstarks. Their sigil is a white sun with a black background. Their words are the Son of Winter, a reference to Carlin Stark being the son of a king of the north, also known as a king of winter. Since there are no Grey Starks named in this series so far, I'm just gonna have to make it up for by going into detail with some of the named Carstarks. The current Carstark family has had a few moments on the show. But like always, their story is a lot more fleshed out in the books. House Karstark answers Rob Stark's summon to war, but Jaime Lannister is able to kill two of Lord Rickard Karstark's sons, Eddard and Torin. His eldest son, Harrion, was captured. Any man who stands between a father and his vengeance asks for death. Lord Karstark! 
This man is our prisoner. This monster killed my son. And crippled mine. He will answer for his crimes, I promise you, but not here. I will have his head, and if you try and stop me... You will strike me down! Jamie was also captured, however, but Catelyn let him escape, taking away Rickard's chance for vengeance. This makes the family fall into pure chaos. The Kingslayer. He escaped in the night. How? How? You commit treason. Because your children are prisoners, I would carve out my heart and offer it to the father if he would let my sons wake from their graves and step into a prison cell. I grieve for your sons, my lord. I don't want your grief. I want my vengeance. And you stole it from me. Rickard betrays Rob by killing Willem and Tion Lannister, who were Rob's hostages to trade. Rickard and his men also killed the Tully guards watching over them. Rob decides to behead Lord Rickard Karstark for his betrayal. Is this a rescue? It took five of you to murder two unarmed squires. Not murder, your grace. Vengeance. Vengeance. Those boys didn't kill your sons. They were his kids. They were boys! Look at them. Tell your mother to look at them. She killed them as much as I. My mother had nothing to do with this. This was your treason. It's treason to free your enemies. In war, you kill your enemies. Did your father not teach her that boy? Oh. Leave him. Blood of the first men flows through my veins as much as yours, boy. I fought the Mad King for your father. I fought Joffrey for you. We are kin, Stark and Car Stark. That didn't stop you from betraying me, and it won't save you now. I don't want it to save me. I wanted to haunt you to the end of your days. Would you speak a final word? Kill me and be cursed. You are no king of mine. With Rickard dead, his oldest and last living son, Harion, becomes a new lord. But since he's still captured, Rickard's uncle is left in charge in the meantime, back at Carhold. His uncle is Arnoff Karstark, and he's pretty old. He was the only northern lord to bend the knee to Stannis when he was looking for the north's support. But old man Arnoff was just playing the game like many ambitious characters do. He only told Stannis that he would support him so the Lannisters would kill Harrion, the heir to Carhold, so that Alice, Rickard's youngest and only daughter, would rule. Arnoff planned to force Alice to marry his son Cregan so that his son would be the true ruling Karstark. All his planning falls apart when Alice runs away to Jon Snow at Castle Black and reveals Arnoff's plans to him. Stannis is aware that he's actually loyal to the Boltons, and that's where the story is so far. With such close ties to the Starks, it's surprising to believe how little loyalty the Grey Starks and the Car Starks have to the main branch family. The Car Starks have even had multiple marriages to the Starks that should have strengthened their bond. In the show, Alice Carstark is appointed Lady of Carhold when Jon Snow shows her mercy. Alice Carstark. For centuries our families fought side by side on the battlefield. I ask you to pledge your loyalty once again to House Stark. It wasn't the most memorable scene considering how crazy Season 7 has been, but it happened. And these are the two known Stark branch families. If George Martin decides to expand on some Stark lore and add some more branch families, I'll update this video in the future. But I don't see that happening in the last two books that will complete the Song of Ice and Fire series. There was so much of the main story left to write that I don't think George Martin has time to worry about adding in extinct branch families. Hope you enjoyed this video, I'll see you guys later.